at the 2010 Team America Rocketry Challenge. We're meeting uh, teams from all over the country. We talked to a group this morning from Seattle. But let's face it, the Chicago guys, they, they've, they've got to have this totally wired. So what's bringing you to TARC 2010? Well, we were uh, all in the same course. Uh, we have a rocket engineering course at our school. Well, obviously, we entered this competition through that course. Uh, we took a long time in just designing the rocket, and then we worked on building it and going out to the field and launching. So it's been a pretty good experience for all of us, I guess I could say. Peter, the ultimate question is, why rockets? Rockets are certainly very interesting. It prevents it presents an uh, engineering challenge. Obviously, it has the cool factor. For, the, for this particular competition, they've got a number of uh, particular goals uh, that have to be attained in order to be able to score reasonably well. What's the most difficult part of this challenge for you? The most difficult part for us is the deployment of the streamers. And we, uh, during the tri uh, trial launches, we had, like, most of the time it doesn't deploy. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but that's our biggest problem, and we we've, we've been working on it, and so so far we've been su pretty successful. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, tell me about your vehicle. What did you build? Uh, how did it come together? What is involved in the building of a competitive rocket that can hopefully, of course, uh, take you all the way to the top of the Tark Pyramid? Well, in our rocket specifically, we have a number of components, and I have to say that the most work goes into the propulsion section, the, the section that really gets the rocket up there. We have to have the right tools to put the motor in to have it set up properly, which include motor mounts and different diffusers, which take away most of the flame of the actual uh, charge that would get your uh, deployment of the streamers, which a GSI, um, or Jason mentioned earlier, is what we're having trouble with. And then you have to obviously engineer the nose cone and figure out how much weight you want in certain places because it changes all kinds of ratios and work on the fins, which obviously have to be very, very detailed. I mean, if you if you have fins that aren't the exact same size, then it's going to affect your flight. So um, a lot of a lot of the work goes in the propulsion section, and we we try to focus a lot on that. The, the most challenging part of this whole experience is really figuring out what's wrong and how to fix it. Because you could you could see, oh, well, this is, there's a problem here, obviously, but how to fix it is um, the hardest part of this entire challenge, and it's, it's a learning experience. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest-to-use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology, and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. So how'd your flight go this morning? In a word, horrible. When we launched, uh, the streamer didn't come out, so the rocket came down pretty hard. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Except without the frying. Yeah, gotcha. Again, that's been kind of par for the course for us. Although we've had we've ha have had some really good flights so far, just not when it counted. What's your support like at at the school, and uh, how how are they uh, supporting your effort, and how do they bring this project to you? Well, I mean, we have a teacher behind us, and he, he really helps us in getting behind the concepts, you know, like what, what exactly makes a rocket work, the physics behind it, basically. And he, he's been behind us for the entire project. He's um, helped coordinate our launch dates and helped build our rockets, taught us lots of fundamentals. And we also had a TARC official, obviously, come for the qualifying flights. And uh, the school itself, I mean, has been really great. They funded the entire thing. They sent us here. We've had a really supportive school, and I think we're lucky because a lot of people had to do a lot of fundraising and stuff like that. We had um, some sponsors, but still, I mean, I'm really impressed with the way the school really got behind us, and I'm, I'm glad we go to the school that we do because some of the schools may not have that that kind of funds and, you know, wouldn't be able to help their students in the way that ours did. Well, obviously, we're all interested whether or not you're going to make a career out of this, and we'll get to that question in a second, but the ultimate question is this. Are you having any fun? Oh yes. <laughs> okay. Again, and I said this before. You get to f you get to fly rockets, and that's fun. We get to meet people from all over the country, compete on the national level. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. 
It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. So how many of you will be back next year? Jisung and I are seniors, so we can't make it back. But Joe... I'm a sophomore, and I'll definitely be coming back next year, or I intend to at least, uh, providing that I get the, the chance, the opportunity. Uh, this has been a great experience for me. I've met a lot of people here. I've talked to a lot of um, people who have professional experience in terms of not only you know rocket engineering, but other fields of science and technology, which have really interested me and have really gotten me, you know, I've, I've got cards now. I've got people to email. I know what I want to chase now a little bit more than I did before. And final question, uh, any of you, is this inspiring you to take on a career in engineering or even better, aerospace? Absolutely, definitely. I mean, to be honest, I didn't really know anything about aerospace uh, as a, in terms of career options or uh, in terms of what it was really about until this whole class started and this whole competition started. And now I've gotten to learn so much more about the different things I could be involved with and the different people I've met have really been able to ha impact me. And this has been a great experience for me. Um, oh yes, I knew before I took this class and, or, and went to this event that engineering was definitely something that I was going to look at, but this definitely cemented this goal and it's looking more and more like something I'm good at and something that's a likely prospect for my future. Well gentlemen, we wish you the best of luck uh, for whatever your endeavors may be from here. Sorry about the tough luck, but boy, I'll tell you what, uh, I've, uh, I've got a 30 year background in flight test and uh, it always goes wrong in one form or another, but that's the stuff you learn from. So congratulations on what you've learned so far and best of luck in the future.